Is that too bright? Yes. Is that better? Yes. So, how are we doing? She's fully dilated and doing just fine. Very good. The good news is that the Zig Alert has been canceled, but the bad news is it's the usual bottleneck into the Vineland Pass. Back to you, Phil. In local news making national headlines, the jury deliberated just over eight hours before returning with a guilty verdict against Darius Woodson for the murder of Kathy Williams and her unborn child. The former All-Pro receiver now faces two life terms in prison. The sentence will be handed down next week. Coming up, sports, and then Money Talks with Mark Chancellor. Okay, yeah. Kathy, take it easy. <laughs> ah, there she is. The love of my life, my ray of sunshine, and my glass of orange juice in the morning. Frankie, smooth talker, I know you say that to all the girls. Oh, not to all, sweetheart. I'm only here for you. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Say, you, you okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Have a good one, Frank. You too, Annie. Whoa, whoa watch out. Thanks. Just looking out for you. Oh, good morning, Miss Brown. Thank you, Susan. Oh, excuse me. I have no idea. 
right there, Em. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> you look terrible. Too much celebrating? No, and thanks. For the tea. Well, your big win is everywhere. I guess it is. <laughs> was a good win, wasn't it? Sure was. Can I talk to you about something for a moment? Yeah, of course. Do you ever have nightmares? I mean, uh, really terrible ones you can't seem to shake off? <laughs> yeah, about my ex-boyfriend. No, seriously. Mm. What is it? No, it's just a headache. And Mr. Shenson would like to see you when you have a moment. Thanks, Jennifer. Please tell him I'll be right there. Thank you very much. Who's that man standing over there? What man? The man standing right. Anne? Anne, are you all right? Can I get you something? Uh, no, 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 I'm fine. Are you sure? <sighs> okay, listen, if you need me, you know where I am. Yes, uh, th thanks. What do you know about Audrey Thompson and the Lavin case? Uh, let's see. Audrey Thompson is a nurse at St. Andrews, was assisting Dr. Lavin during a DNX when something evidently went wrong. I want you to take it. Why would I take it? It's not a murder case. In fact, I don't even think there is a case. This type of abortion is legal in this state. Oh, come on. Besides, I'm a pro-choice gal. Oh, we're all well aware of that. Just take a look. Why me? Let's just say it's got your name all over it. I'll take a look. You're Ann Brown, aren't you? I hear you're uh, taking the Lavin case. Well, that didn't take long. I have nothing to say. It's okay, I understand you can't talk about it. Yeah, you know, just one more thing and I'll keep quiet. Uh, you don't really want to take this case. Are you threatening me? No. No, it's, uh, just a warning. And why do you feel that I need to be warned? Well, aside from it being a hopeless case, you have absolutely no idea what you're up against. Well, aren't you the arrogant one? Thank you. You just made up my mind. I'm just trying to help. Listen, I don't know who you are. Trust me, Anne. You're in way over your head on this one. I don't need this. Sir, can you push 12? Sir, 11? Sir, the next floor? Come with me. Are you okay? Who was that? You'll find out soon enough. What's that? <laughs> Mother? Mother? 
Why do you watch these old movies? You can't spend all your time home like this. Mother, did you hear about the Woodson case? I won. It set a precedent for murder convictions. I really feel like I'm making a difference. Well, okay, I, uh, guess I better go. Are you gonna be all right? I'll be back again tomorrow to check on you. I love you. I love you, Mommy. What are you doing here? Don't worry about the visions. It's just their sick way of messing with you. What are you talking about? It's getting closer. How's it coming? Are you all right? <laughs> Rule number one. Never allow our personal emotions to get involved in the case. I broke rule number one. Go on. Well, I, I know it's strange, but I can't help but feel like I'm fighting for my life as well as this baby's. 
I keep trying to imagine this child struggling to live and what must have been going through her tiny little head. <laughs> I know there's no way she could have comprehended what was happening to her, but still. You know how they say that when you die, your life flashes before your eyes? Well, what about her? She never had a chance to live. So what flashed before her eyes? The, the future she was denied? Well, at least she put up a fight. I'll give her that. Do give her that. Besides, whether we live for 90 years or 90 seconds, there's a part of us that goes on forever. Do you honestly believe that? I know it. Try to get some rest. And don't worry. I'll be there for you. You always are. I brought your suit, the green one. Thanks. Linda, I can do this, right? You always do. Yeah. No, no, I'm okay. That's no problem. Really, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, then. All rise. Department of Superior Court is now in session. The Honorable Francis G. Albertson presiding. Be seated. People versus Lavin, case number OGF120903. Counsel, it's good to see the two of you. Your Honor. Your Honor. Preliminary matters? None, Your Honor. None, Your Honor. Is everyone here that you require? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, no, Your Honor, but I'm afraid the matter is out of our hands. And why is that, Ms. Brown? Sadly, Your Honor, the one witness we unfortunately cannot have testified is the victim in this case. I object, Your Honor. The victim in this case is clearly my client. He performed a legal dilation and extraction abortion, which is covered by the guidelines of state law. And now, all this. Your client is not the victim. Well, I beg to differ. And you're not going to use the Unborn Victims of Violence Act here. Counsel, please approach the bench. Where is this going? Your Honor, under the Unborn Victims of Violence Act, it is a federal crime to injure or kill a fetus at any stage of development. I'm aware of the act stipulations, Mr. Condon. Yes, of course, Your Honor, but it appears Ms. Brown is confusing this case with her previous one, which she rightly won. I mean, Darius Woodson did, in fact, kill Kathy Williams and her unborn child, which made that assault a federal crime which was subject to the Unborn Victims of Violence Act. Dilation and extraction abortion, on the other hand, or partial birth abortion, as some will surely refer to it, is not a violation of any federal law. Thank you for that tutorial review. However, this case has nothing to do with that act. This is a murder case. Your Honor, please. The abortion performed is legal in this state. There's more to it, Your Honor, as Mr. Condon and his client are very well aware. Are you both finished? Please tell me that you are. I am. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, then. You may begin with your opening argument. Thank you. 
This trial is not about the legality of DNX, also known as partial birth abortion. That's for another court and another time. This trial is also not about Dr. Lavin's original intent. As pointed out by the defense counsel, Dr. Lavin's original intent has already been determined legal by the law allowing partial birth abortion and his license to perform such a procedure in this state. We're also not here to discuss character. I'm sure Dr. Lavin is of sound character, a competent doctor, a good father, and a faithful husband. I am. We're here. We're here to find the truth and just what took place during what was supposed to be a routine procedure. But most of all, we're here to determine just what difference three inches make. Three inches and truth. That's why we, you, are here. Your Honor, we call Audrey Thompson to the stand. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you're about to give in the cause pending before this court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Audrey, you are a registered nurse at St. Andrews, are you not? I am. How long have you been a nurse? 12 years. Do you know Dr. Lavin? Yes, I do. Is he indeed the man sitting at the defense table next to Mr. Condon? Yes, he is. And you were assisting Dr. Lavin at the time of this incident Objection, when- Objection, alleged incident. Sustained. Of course. You were assisting Dr. Lavin at the time when this alleged incident took place. Yes, I was. Why don't you take us through what you witnessed during this procedure when this alleged incident took place? <sighs> the patient came into the room fully dilated. Why was she dilated? Was she already in labor? No. Since this procedure takes place in the second or third trimester before the natural onset of labor, the cervix is not ready to open on its own. So we stimulate the dilation process by administering medications that cause the cervix to dilate within three to five days. Are you saying that a partial birth abortion takes three to five days? The total process, yes. But everything was fine. Fine? Yes. The patient's heart rate and blood pressure were fine. And like I said, she was uh, fully dilated, so Dr. Lavin had no problem breaching the fetus. Breaching the fetus, the baby. How and why is this done? Well, guided by ultrasound, Dr. Lavin grabs the fetus. He grabs the baby. Yes, with forceps. He then, um... He then pulls the baby into the birth canal. This is done so that all but the baby's head is delivered. So that all but the baby's head is delivered? Yes. Was the baby healthy? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. The witness is not a medical doctor. Sustained. By any chance, is the baby's heart rate also monitored? Absolutely. It's um, visible on the ultrasound monitor. Did all of the monitoring signs seem normal to you based upon your training and your 12 years of experience? Yes, they appeared normal. So, based upon that, we can presume that the baby was healthy. Objection, Your Honor. The witness is there merely to assist the doctor. Sustained. I withdraw the question. So why don't you tell us what happened after Dr. Lavin delivered the baby up to the head? Audrey? That's when something happened that I'd never seen before. To everyone's surprise, the baby wrapped its, her. You see, the baby was a girl. The baby wrapped her tiny hand around Dr. Lavin's thumb. 
Just as gently as you please. It was such a, a tender moment. And I believe, I can only speak for myself, but I, I believe it caused us all to stop and think about what we were doing. Including Dr. Lavin. Objection, your honor, calls for speculation as to what others were thinking. Now, by the witness's own admission, she cannot speak for anyone but herself. Sustained. What, what did Dr. Lavin do next? He hesitated. Hesitated? Yes. What should he have done? Objection, your honor, lack of foundation. Once again, the witness is not a medical doctor. Sustained. Again, Audrey, with your 12 years of experience, are you familiar with this procedure? Yes, I am. Then please tell me what you witnessed in the past to be standard procedure. No objection. I'll allow it. Well, um, the procedure calls for the doctor, once all but the baby's head has been pulled from the mother, to take a pair of scissors and insert them into the base of the baby's skull and spread them to make a hole. Objection. Your Honor, it is not necessary to have the witness provide such a graphic description I'm of the procedure. I'm sorry that the defense counsel finds the details of this procedure so disturbing, but Your Honor, we must first establish what the routine steps are for a partial birth abortion in order to show where this particular time things did not go according to plan. Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Audrey, you were saying that a pair of scissors is inserted into the base of the baby skull to make a hole. Yes, and uh, then a catheter is inserted into the hole and it sucks the baby's brain out, causing the skull to collapse. The dead baby is then removed. That must be quite a sight. No. Excuse me, please speak up. I said no, it isn't. But this time, it was no ordinary procedure, was it? No, it wasn't. Tell us what happened. Like I said, um, when the baby grabbed Dr. Lavin's thumb, he hesitated for a moment. And then instead of removing the baby's hand, he reached for the scissors with his other hand. And when he did, he leaned away from the baby. But she held on tight. And and what, Audrey, what happened next? And she was pulled from her mother. Pulled from her mother, you mean delivered? Yes. And then what? And then Dr. Lavin, he stuck the baby's head back in the mother and he performed the procedure. You're telling the court that Dr. Lavin delivered a baby girl, replaced her head in her mother, and then performed a partial birth abortion? Yes. Has this ever happened before? Not that I've witnessed. Thank you, Audrey. Audrey, one more thing. What did you do when this happened? I didn't know what to do. I froze. I just stood there, staring at her angelic face and her tiny hand. I had just moments before been so full of life. Three inches. The only difference between partial birth abortion and homicide is three inches.
Thank you, Audrey. No more questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defense calls to the stand Miss Sarah Brown. consent to have an abortion? Yes. Please speak up, Ms. Brown. Yes. <gasps> What's happening? And why did you consent to have an abortion? I didn't know what else to do. <gasps> Wait, I don't understand what's going on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know what else to do. <gasps> Mother! I'm so sorry. I didn't know what else to do. I don't understand what's happening. I'm so sorry. I object, Your Honor. Stop this. Please raise your right hand. You still understand that the testimony you're about to give in this cause pending before this court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I just wanted you to love me. Standing in a place of reflection Faces that look back on yours Millions of glowing lanterns Sentenced to drift across to the distant shore One voice is clear above us Whispering in the rain Yet we stand in fields of pride no Words have spoken, twisted in thoughts broken, pages torn from the book of life, echoes of love spoken. I look for the guiding hand that leads to the steps of. 